Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today on this rainy day here in Pictou County. My name is Pastor Caroline Barclay and I'm from Master's Hand Ministry. So this afternoon as we open in prayer, uh, our message today is going to be called Think Only on These. So let's open in prayer. Oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the rain. We are blessed in it, and we are blessed in all our days of the past and going forward. If we paused to look back, we would realize just how much we have been given. And it would take us a very long time to try to recount all our blessings. Going forward, we know that you have a wonderful plan for our lives because your word in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 tells us. If we, can hear, if we can learn to think only on the goodness, mercy, and grace you bestow upon us, then surely we can see that you have us in your care. Let our minds rest in your goodness. Amen. You know, as I began to pen this message, the Lord directed me to this scripture that I'm very familiar with. And I thank him for Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. And I'm using the Good News Bible version. So, I'll read this to you. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking Him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts, minds, in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my brothers, fill your minds with those things that are good and deserve praise things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful scripture. This past week, in our board meeting on Monday night, we had to make a decision that was not easy, and we decided to keep our church congregation separate until September. This was a very difficult decision to come to as we're missing one another so very much. We miss the fellowship and the study of the word together, our hugs and our handshakes and our laughter. Our time spent encouraging one another is greatly missed as well, along with our praise reports and the blending of our voices as we sing the old and new songs of worship to our Lord. These strengthen us as we give voice to, give voice to the comforting and the powerful lyrics that we have many of today. So you ask, why what must we stay separated? As we have all experienced at some point in our lives, Sometimes we must make a difficult decision for the betterment of the community. And even though we had hoped and prayed that summer would bring an end to this separation, this is just not our reality right now. And so as a group, as a congregation, we must make and comply with this decision. Closing our schools, public entertainment centers, churches, and community halls, all places that large crowds gather, will continue to save us at this time from perhaps contracting and or spreading a virus that we, as a global community, still do not have a handle on, and which will be carried by people who will have no outward symptoms. And they don't even know that they're ill. It is difficult. I know. However, we need to comply with the medical directives and the advice from our government 
for our own well-being. Since our meeting Monday night, the guidelines have changed again a bit and the numbers have increased as well, but we are going to stay with our directive for this time. Now, having said all of that, how does this relate in Scripture to our decision to keep our gathering online services from now until September? Well, first of all, in prayer, God tells us in verse 4 to be joyful and rejoice. When we stay close to Jesus, studying his word, listening to worship music, watching the live stream sermons, or however we're receiving our messages from God, we realize that God is in control. He will never let us down. He has never let us down to this point, and he is not about to do that now. More than ever, people are seeking him and his wisdom as they journey through these times of uncertainty. In this world of technology, we are well able to meet the multitudes with the word and the love of Jesus, and that should cause us as Christians to rejoice, knowing that his message is loud and clear. He is very near. We are commanded in verse 5 to show a gentle attitude toward everyone because he is coming soon. Well, folks, I personally see people being more kind, gentle, compassionate, understanding, generous, and loving in these past months than I have ever noticed before. People are caring for people. People are caring about people, not just those close to them. Not only their family or friends, but strangers, some from across the world, and that certainly is what the Lord would have us to do. In verse 6, we are told not to worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, and always thank Him with a thankful heart. As God teaches us not to worry, he says, leave our burdens, concerns, fears, and anxiety with him. He cares for us and about us. And he watches over us. He knows our future. He knows which footprints are ours, and he wants us to rest easy in his protection. God is our helper, our provider, defender, guide, and deliverer. Hmm. He is our salvation. So, stop worrying and start praying more for yourselves and for others who you know, that they will feel the peace that he provides. Know he will meet your daily needs as his word promises, and give thanks to him in and for all things. Have a thankful heart, and this will be evident to others as you speak to them about your Heavenly Father. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in union with Christ Jesus. This is what verse 7 says, and, it's prom and that's a promise to us. When we learn to truly leave our troubled minds and anxious souls in the hands of the Lord, peace will come over us. Remembering what Paul wrote just in the previous verse, 
Don't worry about anything. We need to grasp what that truly entails. It is hard not to worry, but worry will bring you into a lifetime of constant fear. And Paul wants us to know that God sees our concerns. He sees our needs and our problems. And he is with us to help us carry our burdens. God says, come and lay your burdens down, and I will give you rest. Now, that should take away our worry and provide us with peace. Knowing that when we align our lives with Jesus, accepting him as Lord and Savior, and living our lives to please the Father, we will undoubtedly see the benefit of that trust and our relationship with him. Our hearts and minds will not carry the worry of the world, and that worry the world wants to put on our back. God will take this load from us. The final verse we are looking at today, verse 8, states, In conclusion, my brothers, fill your mind with those things that are good and deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Wouldn't those thoughts be sweeter and lighter to carry than worries? Imagine spending your time every day thinking about these things and not our troubles, which the Lord has already taken from our back. If we strictly meditate on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely and honorable. Just imagine all the good and positive actions we can bring into our day and then share it with those that we are in contact with. Our day and their day, I would venture to say, would be more pleasant and bring a beautiful reflection as to who we are in Christ and who he is in us. If we live his word as he instructs us, we will be praising all the day long. Sometimes the best thing we can do and what we need to do for our mental health is to turn off the TV and the computer from that constant newsreel of uncertainty and step into the word of God. This is so that we are not overtaken by Satan, who wants us in a place of confusion, anxiety, worry, and fear, because that is all he has to offer. God promises us a clear mind, peace, tranquility, and a safe refuge in him. This is the very peace he speaks about when he talks about a peace that goes beyond human understanding. And that will keep our hearts and minds in union with Christ Jesus. Our focus on Christ and not on the world will give us reason to rejoice. When all our decisions in life are based on the Word of God. We know we are carrying out His will. So, we as His people await our social gathering in great numbers in a safe and protected future. We rest assured that even during these times of closed doors, our hearts and our minds are open to His direction of spreading the gospel. We are thankful for the ways we have of reaching many people as we celebrate 
the goodness of the Lord, rejoicing in Him always. I noticed when I was writing this, I looked at my pen and it was pink and it had the words inscribed on it, rejoice always. So appropriate. See, God has many ways of reaching us, even in a simple reminder on the pen I used. Thank you, Lord. You are amazing. One day soon, we shall all gather in the safety of his appointed time. Think only on these. Thank you. Let us pray. Today, as we give thanks and rejoice in you, Lord, we are reminded of your great love to us. As we go forth, we know you will bring us all back together soon. And we will see an increase as we watch for your plan for our future. You are a mighty and awesome God, and it is our privilege to serve you, bringing all honor and glory to your name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining me today, and I trust that as we move forward and the world starts to open up in great numbers again, that we will be mindful to do the social distancing and we will be mindful to um, make sure that we're not um, doing things that we shouldn't be doing. So let's not all run to the beach and lay in the sand and, and uh, be sort of so close to one another that you, that you can't just even breathe. You know, this virus is still to be taken serious. And so we want to follow the guidance of the Lord. So again, protect yourselves, protect your family and your friends. This right now is the best gift you can give them, to know that they are secure. And we know we are secure in the hands of the Lord. I trust you'll have a good week ahead. God bless you.